So, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. So I have. I, I think that they come right before because I'm going to be talking about food and it's almost like five. So <laughs> I, I see what you did there. Um, so many times when I start talking, I always ask people like, what do they think of when they hear the word farmer? And most of the time, it's a culture white man. However, I grew up on the Navajo Nation and I grew up around strong indigenous farmers. Um, and I don't know any actually any males that actually farm. Uh, this is my aunt here. <laughs> she uh, runs a pretty big farm. She um, is uh, cooking sixty, but she uh, works out like she's twenty-two. Like <laughs> she is, is intense. And so I am very proud right now to be representing the over fifty percent of the uh, of the female Native Americans that actually uh, operate farms in Arizona. So while well, Arizona's diversity, especially in agriculture, is huge, and they're uh, uh, like we do uh, the um, the DEI in aspects of different types of cultures and um, uh, uh, race, and and, it, and there's just so many different types of uh, farmers there. They're actually really behind in government governance, and so especially now in this uh, climate where drought and especially the Colorado River is now drying up um, and many tribes depend on that. There's really no tribes that are at the table right now discussing this governance. And this is kind of where our, our uh, program, Irrigate, comes in. It stands for Irrigate Resources which is Indigenous Growers of Tribal Entities. And so what we were really trying to do is make, is we make sure that there is cultural respect. But we're not just one way, we're not just one direction. We also want to respect non-native traditions as well. So what we're also looking is, is um, we are taking very dense technical materials, such as uh, agricultural policy, both at a federal, state, and tribal level, and we're translating that using a universal design of learning. Um, and when we translate that, we are then uh, going to be using the pictographs, YouTube videos, podcasts, hands-on applications, and uh, those are the, our first few steps right now. Long term, we would like to do uh, more like documentaries and really start uh, making sure that Native agriculture is the prominent and uh, really well known and respected. So this method works because. Um, I have taken a really, really dense material, uh, microbiological concept, and actually was able to do a um, translate it into an easy to comprehend lesson, which actually was adopted by the FDA uh, a few years ago and is now used um, nationally for almost all their training. For all their training. And it started out here at Diné College when it was just a tribal call um, a few years ago where I, I took that concept. And so we know this works because the government took it from me. <laughs> okay, so um, also we really want to address that. Uh, that we really want to make sure that we have um, native agriculture uh, really rep well represented on the board. Um, right now, there's only out of 58 members, there's only one person that identifies as Native American. Um, however, in Arizona, 57% of all our farmers and ranchers are Native American. Yeah, there's only one person that can, I guess, try to speak for us. But um, yeah, we need, to, we need to change that. So. What we are asking uh, right now is that we are really wanting to try to expand. Right now, we are still in the beginning stages. Uh, we are launching our, our huge website, um, hopefully by December. Um, we are really wanting to make sure that this would be a good uh, pilot and that we can see Arizona um, to be able to do, expand into these other states, such as um, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, where the uh, native agriculture is just expanding ex exponentially. So we, we, we believe at Irrigate that there is a solution to every problem, we just need to cultivate those solutions together. Thank you.